Hey everybody, it's Chris from MedZone. Welcome to another podcast. Today we are going to be talking about hooking up analog consoles to your digital television and what options you have. I have Chris and Ramon here with me today. All right, Ramon, we're here. Hey, it's Chris. Yeah, we're kind of we got the theme going now. Yep. So, All right. All right. So we're talking about using. Uh, yeah, I guess a, a lot of it is really trying to play your old games on on newer TVs, obviously. Uh, I mean, there's tons of different options. You can talk about, you know, there's the clone consoles, like the, uh, oh, what are they called? Anything now? from, like, uh, oh, well, there's the Hyperkin. A- there's the Hyperkin. ABS-ness. Yeah. But uh, the, the price of that is, is quite high. Yeah, the Retrons, that's what I was thinking of. So there's things like there's the Retrons you can use. There's, you know, using, obviously, the original consoles, which I think most people would rather, you know, in a perfect world, you'd rather be able to use your original console on a new TV. Um so it's kind of like how you hook those up, how do you play that, how do you play your original games on, on newer systems, especially with TVs not having component comps it. They only have HDMI and then that's it. They're just axing everything to make them thinner and smaller. You know, that, how things go with modern TVs now. Um, I guess we could just start with, you know, like, okay, let's start with the kind of connection types you're expecting to look at for these old consoles and uh, let's go from there. Yeah, I mean, obviously the old ones you have, uh, you're going to have your, your coax. So I think TVs still have that, like we were just talking about beforehand. So TVs still have coax, so you can still plug in your Atari for whatever reason you'd want to plug that on your new TV. Uh, and they're like for component composite. Uh, things like Dreamcast has got the VGA. Yeah, you got VGA. Um, I think the Dreamcast does this video. It does, but yeah, it does, so. but you need the box thing. But not components. Doesn't do components. Yeah, not and, and I mean some consoles they have like S video straight out of it. You could just do S video, which is kind of a little bit nicer than right. And then you got the folks from like Europe or something, and they got they got lucky with SCART. SCART. Yeah, so you have your SCART connections too, which I'm holding a SCART cable right now. <laughs> which is like it was never really a standard in North America, so no, it was like a Japan and European standard. Yeah, that, yeah, it was. It, it was, was the RGB signal standard and. It was big in Europe and yeah. the UK. Everybody in the UK has SCART on their TVs. Well, they used to. I don't know if they well, do. Yeah, now or not. probably not. Oh, yeah, I would think not so much nowadays. But like our RF was their SCART, and SCART was like better. Was yeah, but by default, nicer. well, it just well, had a little bit like it was more. You had all your connections as opposed to just like well, individual for um, component or composite or whatever else. Well, most well, regardless of how it's connected, it's always. It's TVs back in the day were 352 by 240 interlaced, right? Mm -hmm. So you had RF, which was a mix of video and audio using radio frequencies, which wasn't the best, and it was really bad for interference. And then you have composite, and then which is video only, and then you have separate audio, but it's the chroma and the luma mixed together, and it's better than RF. You don't have the interference problems. And then you have S video, which is the chroma and the luma separated into one plug and then you have separate audio and then you have component which is just straight rgb but you're still limited to 240i at that point i mean even even if you're running scart you're still getting rgb out of scart but it's still 30 kilohertz 240i right so yeah, yeah. so you have to find an intermediate way to line double it or scale it up to make it look good on your tv and then you're running into the problem where crts use non-square pixels and lcds use square pixels so if you hook up your NES using composite cables it looks awful <laughs> it looks awful because it's trying to fit non-square pixels into square pixels you know round peg square hole right yeah and double so if it's like a widescreen tv and then it just scales it up all the way to the end yeah, and it looks really the, like the chunky little, little messes you didn't really see before are suddenly just blown up in your face like, yeah, yeah. And, and, mo- and all the tv all the lcd tvs maybe not the early ones they do the deinterlacing, but it doesn't do the you know rectangular pixel to square pixel for you so it always has that really weird look to it like 
Yeah. Like, when we play Super Mario Brothers like that, it looks like Mario has all these growths and stuff because of the way the pixels don't well, fit. The other thing, too, is with trying to use, uh, you know, any kind of upscaler and stuff like that, you always, you know, people are going to be concerned about things like input lag because you have, you're converting an analog signal to digital signal, so your processor is actually going to add frames of delay between what the console is doing versus what you're seeing because it's actually converting your signal over. Because yeah. you're, uh, so, I mean, one of the options we were talking about just before this, too, was the, um, uh, what, the H, uh, HD retrovision pound cables. Uh, yeah, I see those everywhere. I don't know if they're any good or not. Though. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I, I've used those ones, the the pound cables, and uh, I, they do have input lag. Like, you have, like, four or five frames of input lag. It depends on what you want to play, like, whether or not you're going to notice that. Uh, I mean, you get what you pay for. They're cheap. Right, that's the cheap way of playing it on your TV. See, I think I think even the more expensive route, say like a Frame Meister, I think you're still looking at like point two of a frame lag. Like, but I mean, it's it's imperceptible. But well, I mean, I mean there's, yeah, there's... when you when you get to like a frame or less of lag, I think for the most part that stops mattering because like, well, I mean, you're not even perceiving that right. that amount of lag. But when you have like five six frames and you like, you can see you hit something and there's just that like, oh, mm-hmm. that seems a little little off. I mean, even even TVs themselves introduce a bit of lag so that's why some tvs have game mode you have to turn well on. yeah because that's of right the, the picture processing everything like that to make your signal look nicer that's adding uh its own input lag into that yeah like the the denoise filter and then the um the you know the th- what is it the 30 frames to 120 frames you know that yeah. fluid motion crap yeah yeah, I yeah always turn off yeah so it looks awful it just uh, looks so fake yeah, the interpolation weird. thing so yeah depends on who you ask yeah. <laughs> Whether it's not good to you? Yeah, I mean, so nowadays, anyway, you have you have a lot more options. I say, especially now versus like five, six years ago for playing mm. your old consoles. So if you want to like take your NES, and you're like, well, I want to play it on a new TV. I think you have a lot more options now to actually get decent picture quality out of it, and like not worrying about input lag. Like you're you have a lot more options. So if you want to use the original consoles, you still have things like there's the uh, the pound cables. Like I said, those. Uh, they're cheap. You get what you pay for. Uh, you get a little Im- bit of input lag, but you know if you're playing like a RPG or something like that where input lag doesn't really matter, eh, fill your boots. You know, it's not really a big issue. Um, you have things like Ramon has the OSSC. Yep. Uh, which has got lots of inputs on it. I'm just looking at it right now. Yeah, I have it in my hand right here, and it does have a few inputs here. The only thing it doesn't have is composite and S-video, which is going to be a deal-breaker if you want to keep your consoles kind of original. Yeah. So, but, I mean, you got, like, your VGA in. You got, yeah. Uh, you, I don't know what I've got there. component, component here. There. It's got SCART on it, so it's got a lot of different options. Does it introduce any lag that you notice, or...? Um, not, if there was, it was like maybe one or two frames, but it really just depends on the game. I, w- I would happily play, like, GameCube Smash on this for sure. Yeah. So, and the other one I got right here on my, yeah, I have the uh, RetroTank 5X. So this one's got S-Video, it's got Component com- Composite, it's got SCART. It's kind of got everything you want on it. It's one of the new ones. It's it's harder to get right now just because it's just come out and there's been a huge demand for getting it. Correct. Um. But same thing, it looks really nice. It really, like, basically what these ones are is they're, uh, they're upscalers and, like, line doublers. So, essentially, it takes your original signal and it just, instead of stretching it to fit, it just fills in the blanks, basically. It just doubles everything up to be like, well, now it's twice as big. And then that fills up your screen without stretching it. Yeah, and uh, it deinterlaces it and makes a progressive scan. And- yeah. yeah, like, you'll have a really nice, clean signal out of it. And I know they do uh, RGB right through it. So um, for things like your Super Nintendo, your Genesis, like Sega Saturn, and stuff like that, you'll get the nicest possible signal out of it uh, without yeah. really adding any input lag. That um, Yeah, that is... And you can plug a straight HDMI straight to your TVs. It's so. also good for, like, recording stuff because, you know, sometimes recording from these old consoles can be a pain. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I know there's other options like there's a Frame Meister, but I don't know if anybody really uses Frame Meister anymore because those were pretty expensive. They're like I, seven hundred dollars for Frame Meister. Eight hundred USD, and yeah, not many yeah. people can afford those. I, I mean, think it's been discontinued as well, so yeah. trying to find one now is going to be difficult. Yeah, there was I, I a think there's mini, enough. There was a mini Frame Meister. 
Yeah, but I think with the other options now, you don't really like Frame Meister used to be kind of the only the only game in town, and that was that was it. If you wanted to, you know, to play on a new TV, you had to use a Frame Meister. And I don't think that's really the case anymore. Like, there's a lot more options for doing it. Well, there's the Retro Retro Tank Two X that you can get, which is yeah, a cheaper version. I think it's 129 US. Yeah, something like that. And uh, that personally, I'm going to be ordering one of those. I don't need a 5X. Yeah, so I, I think for most people, you get the cheaper options. Like, you get the Retro Tank. I think the Retro Tank 2X is probably one of the cheapest options that's actually going to get you still... I, well, I'd say the cheapest option I would go with, because it's... The cheapest uh, option with the least caveats, I'd say. Yeah, because you're not really giving up anything. It's just a matter of you don't have as many things. Because with the 2X, you still have... You can have, uh, I think, Composite, Component, S-Video uh, on one version, and there's another version that's just SCART. Um... Yeah, I, I, I'm going to get the uh, composite S video and component, and that'll basically cover all my consoles. Yeah, yeah, basically. Um, so that those are the, that that would be as cheap as I would go. I'd say like don't anything less than that. I mean, you're getting what you pay for. You spend forty bucks on like a pound cable. Well, you're you're going to get the input like. Now, I just want to mention that you can buy component cables for certain consoles like GameCube. right. There's the GameCube, yes. Wii, Xbox, Xbox 360. Now, even though you're running component, you're still limited to the resolution of what comes out of the the right. machine right so let's take uh Wii for an example you have component cables for Wii, but you're still stuck at 480p I think right i think it's yeah. only 480i isn't it 480p no you can get 480p okay. only out of component oh, cables out of component. Okay. anything else is i yeah and the same with the gamecube the gamecube is probably only 480i well 480p yeah. if you have the component cables but that's it on yeah. the gamecube yes yeah. oh okay yeah so um and there's also the HD retrovision cables for I think Genesis. And Genesis, uh, there's a Super Nintendo. Then you got Super Nintendo. Then they sell adapters for the Genesis component cable, so you can use your PS ones with it. Oh. Okay, and do those cables got... upscale, or are they just just component at whatever resolution? It's... I think it's just whatever resolution. It's just okay. it's just taking RGB signal out of it because uh, Super yes. Nintendo and your Sega Genesis and stuff will output RGB like. By default, no modding, no nothing. Required. Exactly. They put that out, and then that's good. Uh, obviously, you can use, like I said, you can use clone consoles as well. So you have things like the Retrons, which are, eh, they're more emulation boxes. And personally, they... personally, I've purchased the Hyperkin uh, HDMI NES. Um, it was yeah, garbage. Should, yeah, it was yeah, garbage in the fact that. that it had horrible slowdown when you played the games, but the picture looked good. I do own the HDMI Genesis and the HDMI SNES. And those are actually really good. If you play Star Fox on the HDMI SNES, it actually runs it at 60 frames a second, unlike right. the original SNES. The SNES yeah. So it's actually quite yeah. good. Yeah. And I mean, you have things now with, like, you have FPGAs. Um, analog. Anything from analog. Yeah, there's the analog, analog NT, NT, I think. NT, uh, and then you got the, the Genesis one. Um, there's, yeah, there's a Super NT, and then you got the Gen Genesis the Noir one. or something. I think it is. Yeah. But I mean, those those are all good. The only thing I find with those is just the cost is so prohibitive it for is. using the NTs. It's like it's cool. It's a new console, but the cost is just like Jesus. The the Hyperkin HDMI consoles were cheap. I think the NES was sixty dollars, but it was garbage. Yeah, and I think the Genesis and the SNES were both. Um, sixty to seventy dollars, and actually, for what you pay for them, they're actually quite good. I do own a uh, AVS NES from. Is it Retrobit? I think it's Retrobit. Yeah, yeah, yeah Retrobit. I... That one has a high price tag, but in my opinion, it's worth it because you can also play Famicom carts on it. Yeah, I... I mean, I think the thing with a lot of stuff, you know, you really you look at the price, you go, "Well, that's so expensive." Like, but I think at the same time, you get what you pay for. Like, I know with the AVS because yep. you can play Famicom, you can play NES. It's got like a four score built in, so it's got four controller ports. Game Genie. It's got yeah, Game Genie built in. It's got uh, HDMI out, so you're you're getting all the bells and whistles with it. And a bonus is is the power and reset buttons are new old stock from when they stopped making Nintendos. Yeah, and they found like, a warehouse full of them, so they just bought them and. It's such a weird thing. So he's like, "You'll never guess what I just found. What a." bunch of reset buttons from nintendo it's like new oh, old stock yeah it's awesome. weird <laughs> awesome so there's a, there's a bit of history and even the design is you know very reminiscent of the north american nest so yeah yeah, it yeah it's kind of a cool design so i mean um you know obviously if you wanted to use your original consoles and get your best video then you're looking at things like if you really want to be cheap and you just you don't care about input lag yeah you can get one of the pound cables whatever that's good enough mm. uh or if you're like well 
you want better picture, you don't mind spending a bit more, but you only need it for like one console. You only need it for your Super Nintendo. Well, I mean, you can buy the HD retrovision cables and that'll do well enough. If you start going, well, I have multiple consoles and I want to look up multiple things, mm. then you're looking at, you know, a RetroTank 2X or an OSSC, or if you want to be like, well, I want all the bells and whistles, I want the newest thing, you know, then you can always get the uh, the RetroTank 5X. Um, you know, outside of that, you can use the consoles, like the clone consoles, or like yep. I said, the... Um, the analog NTs or the ABS. Yeah. And those kind of have their own, I guess, pros and cons. For me, the biggest thing is just the cost prohibitive of it. I don't it really... Is, yeah. I've personally never seen a need to be like, well, why do I need to drop like $600 for a console to play something that I can play on my old console? It's It's got that more nostalgia for me, having the original console to play those games and just hook it up to something that upscales my video and that's good enough for me. No, but, personally, I like using the original hardware. But, yeah. uh, I have to say, in the case of the <laughs> in the case of the HDMI <laughs> Genesis that I got, I actually like the controllers that they came with better than the original Genesis. Yeah, yeah you, you get these companies that just improve upon the original controllers, and it's like, ah, I wish I could use this with my real console. Yeah, now. you almost yeah. get like a third party controller for your old console to be like. I mean, with the NES, you know, you have the square ones. It's kind of like kind of like digs in your hand after a while. Like the dog bones were like the best revision. Yeah, of the it. dog bones. You're like, that's that's what you were. Really, you get the rounded, a little, right. little more comfortable in your hands. Well, the the, the the Hyperkin actually works on an original Genesis. Yeah, well, yeah, I think in a that lot case, of, of some of them they actually have. You could just plug it into an old console and it works. Yeah, well. You got companies like Eight Bit Doe that really make good controllers yeah, now. Yeah, it's like the wireless yeah. ones and stuff like that. They make too that you can buy the wireless consoles and you can use those ones, so, uh, which is kind of nice. I mean, it's nice to it's nice to have options, especially when old things like consoles, controllers, stuff like that are dying off. It's nice to know that there's still going to be a way to play a lot of these things. I think some of the analog. Some of the newer analog consoles come with the 8-bit deals bundled. Yeah, I think yeah. they're bundled in. I Now I remember what the Genesis was like, the Mega SG. Mega Maybe, SG, that's, yeah, what, it that's is, yeah. what it is. So that comes with an 8-bit dough controller. Yeah, and, yeah. A, and a wireless dongle, and a little I receiver. Yeah, yeah, and that works well enough. You could actually use it with the real Genesis, and that's a bonus. Yeah, I mean, wonder, I mean, I figure nowadays you wouldn't really have any input lag with something like that because the signal's going to be strong enough. But you figure, like, I wonder if there's like a little bit a little bit of input lag in a wireless controller. But no, I don't think so because, I mean, Xbox, all the wireless yeah, controllers Yeah, well, everything are now is wireless. Right? Yeah, everything's Bluetooth. I mean, now. you got the legendary Waybird. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, that that was a that legend. Was a wireless one. <laughs> I so. mean, you can play Smash with that thing, and it's like, okay, there's not really much lag. No, that's yeah. a good controller. <laughs> it's yeah. a good controller. Yeah. Like, I wish they would just have a lot more clones of that thing now. Yeah, <laughs> but I think kind of summarizing a bit. Like I said, you have a, you have a lot of options. You know, it really I think comes down to the individual for what, how they want to play their games, how they want to approach it. You know, how much are you looking to spend on it? I do think, you know what, like I used to be like, oh, I'll never notice a difference. It, it looks fine on my HDTV playing these old games. But, you know, <laughs> over time, like once I actually yeah. got a hands on one, I was like, you know what, I was wrong. I can admit that I was wrong. You heard it here first. I was wrong. No, but there's a huge difference between 32 inch and 65 inch 4K TVs. I mean, yeah, well, that's, that's a that's huge the thing. You difference. Had, you had a 32 inch TV that now you're like, oh, it looks great, and then you have like a 60 inch, and you're like, what the hell was wrong with me? It's like double the size now. <laughs> the one funny thing I'm actually just gonna throw into end this is that uh, some of them, like uh, Donkey Kong, it actually looks worse. Donkey, which Donkey? Donkey Kong, Kong Country. Sorry. Oh, because um, oh, the because pre the pre rendered the pre rendered because, sprites. Yeah, because the way they did it is they had like kind of like the fogging and kind of like kind of soften the edges and you wouldn't really notice as much. But yeah. then once they started like upscaling it, you're like, oh, this doesn't look good at all. Like, because I want to go back to my 32 and just play it on that instead. You, you got that. like tricks like they used on CRTs because CRTs by their nature they can kind of hide some of these like really weird quirks yeah. that you don't really see until you upscale them. The one thing I'll, I'll add as well is that I'd like to see like there's things that you're you still need CRTs for things like uh, the zappers. For the old yes. consoles they had the zappers yeah. that relied on CRT technology. And I don't really think there's anything nowadays that uses... There's been attempts at it, but it was, like, prohibitively expensive to get, like, zappers that worked on new TVs. Yeah. I know some of them, they have, like, just have, like, an IR sensor that you could just, like, put the IR sensor there, and it's like, ah, eh, it kind of works like a Wiimote. It just uses that instead. And that's kind of a decent enough alternative. But having something that'd be, like, a zapper that you could use, plug it into your Nintendo, and, like, use it like the original 
would be uh, on a new TV would be like eh, they got some that's still a hole to still be filled. Hey, one day. Yeah, that that zapper thing. Somebody has to make something that can actually function on modern TVs because we desperately need that now. Yeah. <laughs> you I would mean, think they would have figured that out. By I mean, now. the thing is, you know, I'm always going to have a CRT kicking around for reasons like that because I'm like, well, if I want to play a zapper game, well, I need to have a CRT to actually. Right, and it. you can't just beat the CRT glow sometimes. It's like, yeah. it's part of the experience, I guess. The warm glow of your childhood. <laughs> yeah, the radiation warming. Yeah. In yeah. Don't, regions. yeah, don't sit too close <laughs> to your melt your eyes. I do have a lot of nostalgia for CRTs only because I obviously you know, grew up with them. So. Yeah. yeah, except now... I think it's the whole experience of it, right? Like, that's, I think, a big part of, like, I mean, like we talked about previously with the digital versus physical. I, I think there's that... It's the whole experience associated with it. It's not just the, the like playing the game is a part of the experience. But I think like having the original TV, the original console, the original game, like it all kind of adds yep. up together to make it a whole experience all together, as opposed to just like the one piece of it. They're still like, ah, it's still fun, still playing the game, whatever. Playing we Mario on my Switch, and it's kind of cool. We mentioned this in another podcast, but it has to do with the Mandela effect, where it, it's how you remember things a certain way, even though if they weren't that way. Yeah, yes, I remember that's that game being, like, Jet Force Gemini. I remember that being oh, so yes. good, and then I play it, and I'm like, oh, this is garbage. Yeah. I don't know, it it's like, <laughs> like, how on earth did I manage to use this controller for so long? Yeah. <laughs> it's one of those kind of effects. Yeah. <laughs> All right, I think with that, we'll kind of wrap up this one. It gives you, like I said, a few options, a few options for playing your, your old games on your new TVs. Yeah. Yep. So that's quite a lot of options. Really, it boils down to your preference. Yeah, your preference, what you want to spend, what you're comfortable with, how you want to experience it, how much you need to be, quote, original. And yeah. Thank All right, you. that's it for our analog consoles on digital televisions. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more great content. All right. All right. See you later. We'll see, see you on the next later. one.